Hi, my name is Kurt, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Kappa Bridge for doing anisotropy of magnetic susceptibility. And uh, here we have the Kappa Bridge, and it comes in three parts. There's a computer that controls it, there is um, the main unit, and there is the sensor over here where we put the samples in. And before we do that, I'm going to show you how to load samples in. We're going to measure them in 15 different positions. We measure them in this device, how we load it in here. So here is a pretend sample. And okay. it's got uh, a lab arrow on the top here. And this arrow is our reference point for measuring this. And we're going to load it into this little cylinder. So we'll do that. And up here we have our chart for the positions, for all 50 positions. So this first column corresponds to the single line. And so position one is going to be with this first dot right there. And then position two, then we rotate the arrow like so, down like that. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that goes for the first five positions. Do 15 of those for each sample and it goes over and over again. So what am I trying to do with these cubes? Um, the thing I'm trying to do is look at landslides and we take cores in those landslides and next to them and we try and look at look for evidence of grains shearing and deforming. If we think about an original sedimentary fabric, um, we'll just use this sheet of paper as an example for what a grain does. When it falls into the water column, flopping around. Um, if it comes to the bottom, it's not going to want to stay in the bottom it's going to want to fall over. And there's a short axis, an intermediate axis, and a long one. So when it falls, it's going to be oriented random. There's going to be grain sliding in all different directions. So we'll have what's called an oblate fabric. And then, in a landslide, you'll then shear this, and you'll actually have a shear force go through and line up the long grains with all of them in the same direction. Inside Bruno's sensing apparatus, the electromagnetic coil wrapped around the sensing area produces an oscillating magnetic field. The constantly changing field induces a current in the sensor coil nearby. When a sample is present, it becomes magnetic in response to the shifting magnetic field produced by the first coil and oscillates with it so that together they induce more current in the sensor coil. An anisotropic sample becomes magnetic to different degrees depending on how it is oriented to the coils. By measuring the sample in several orientations, scientists can calculate which orientations result in the most induced field. Although measuring the sample in 15 positions is not strictly necessary, it allows researchers to calculate error. And then to calibrate the machine. Being that these are sediments, they're, they're pretty uh, weak, so we need to go down to a lower range here. We're going to have to calibrate this in two different places. One is right here. This is I am. The other one is on top of the machine right here. And the one on top of the machine controls the left hand. We'll uh, graph here. So we're going to tune that to be zero. And the right hand one controls the right hand one. So we tune that to be zero also. Okay. And then we let the machine uh, calibrate itself until it says ready. Okay, so it should be almost done. The important rule when working with this on low settings is not to have a belt or a wallet or self. Um, even pennies waved around can, can disrupt the readings. So first we're going to go ahead and calibrate our sample holder. It says ready. We measure. There's the measure. And we drop in the sample holder. Alright. It's in the like that. So we recorded our sample holder range and uh, so now we're going to measure our first sample. We're going to load up the sample, in this case with cubes. My primary arrow here is in dashes, and I'm going to put that in the sample holder. So it's loaded in just like that. This is position one. And we're going to click measure sample. So it says ready in the center here. I'm going to go ahead and click measure. And I drop in the sample. Okay, beat. And out it comes. And I'm going to now measure position two. And it says ready, so I'm going to measure. Drop it in. Okay, and that's all we do for one measurement, so repeat that.
that a couple hundred times and you have yourself a PhD thesis.